Hey everyone, it's Weather for Weather Geeks on this uh, Friday, January the 9th, 2015. I uh, just uh, ate a piece of humble pie. It's been a tough week <laughs> for us uh, weather forecasters uh, here in eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Earlier this week, we had a, an Alberta clipper that uh, kind of underachieved. It was really quick moving and just didn't produce quite as much snow as it could have. Then we had lake effects that missed us kind of west and east. Of course, it caused a lot of problems over in west central Pennsylvania, unfortunately a, a fatal accident over near Clarion. Uh, but we didn't see much out of that lake effect in our viewing area. And then last night's system overachieved, of course, uh, with uh, our forecast of one to three inches uh, being underdone, uh, generally speaking. Now, in some places that worked out fine, but particularly in parts of Mahoning County, uh, the, there were five, six inches uh, worth of snow in many backyards. Mine included in Boardman, woke up to five inches, and Nett in Austintown had six, six and a half inches. These are some of the uh, reports called into the National Weather Service uh, for our local area. As of 7 a.m., four inches in Youngstown, three inches in Austintown, but again, I've seen some higher amounts in Austintown. As I uh, pulled into downtown Youngstown into work uh, today, it did look like uh, we had less snow here downtown than we did in, in Boardman and uh, kind of the 224 corridor. Uh, so that was uh, Mahoning County and uh, Trumbull County. Let's see, at the Youngstown Warren Airport, they reported 2.7 inches at uh, 7 a.m. Newton Falls, a little over two. Up in Mespo, two inches. Uh, Warren, 1.8. So our forecast didn't bust everywhere, but uh, it did bust in some places. Uh, what happened generally was that uh, the main band of snow that pivoted through last evening kind of went as expected, brought half an inch to an inch in most spots. And after that, the snow was never supposed to uh, pick up as much as it did. And as the Arctic cold front approached, it was able to lift the atmosphere enough that that, uh, that secondary band of snow last night, it's the one that brought uh, the heavier accumulations. So uh, we, uh, we definitely had a little more snow than we bargained for in some parts of the uh, region. Here's a look at uh, the Pittsburgh Weather Service snow reports. Salem, 2.4, Wellsville, about an inch. Uh, and then uh, let's see if they have a report from Mercer County. Uh, yeah, Mercer County, uh, two miles east northeast of Sandy Lake, 5.5. So it overachieved a, a little bit up there in, in Mercer County as well. All right, uh, this afternoon, uh, things are quiet. It's cold, of course. We've got uh, clouds, some peaks of sun trying to poke through. You might see a stray snowflake or two. Uh, lake effect ongoing up here along the lakeshore. They've closed down parts of the New York State Thruway between Erie and Buffalo uh, because of the uh, heavy, heavy lake effect snow up there. Uh, temperatures are going to become our major story in the near term. Again, we're going to trade the snow for the just unbearable cold. Uh, right now we have 15 as I record this in Youngstown, but uh, this is about as warm as it'll be all day. Already dropping down into the single numbers in some parts of western Ohio, and numbers will drop pretty quickly, I think, as we head into the evening and into the overnight for tonight. As far as wind chills right now, feels like uh, one below in Youngstown, zero Newcastle, one below Ravenna, and about uh, one degree above or below zero over towards uh, Akron Kent. Wind chills are going to become a very big story as we head through the night tonight. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, here's a look at uh, the actual temperatures forecasted on the latest high-resolution NAM model for tonight. These are the actual lows. As a minus 6 in Youngstown, that may be a little too cold, but I'll tell you, I, I can't take that off uh, the table. I can't discount that with the fresh snowpack tonight and the possibility of at least some hours where the sky will be clear. I can't rule out that uh, six below is reality. I think our forecast will be more like three below, but uh, I can't totally rule out that we get that cold. Notice the minus 10 and minus 11 showing up over towards the traditional colder spots in uh, north central Ohio over towards Mansfield. Those are the actual temperatures. Uh, wind chill advisory in effect. I think wind chills tonight are going to be somewhere between minus 20 and minus 27 by the end of the night tonight. The wind is going to pick up, and with temperatures dropping below zero, you don't need a lot of wind to create these kinds of wind chills. So, uh, you know, this is another common sense situation. Tomorrow morning, if you need to take the dog out, a couple of minutes. That should about do it uh, because, uh, you know, that is nothing to mess around with uh, tomorrow morning as far as the, the wind chills go. And tomorrow afternoon, temperatures probably don't get out of the single digits, and wind chills will stay below zero all day. Now, Sunday is going to be a more tolerable day. We'll get into the upper 20s to around 30, much less harsh on Sunday. But then here we go again with another round of wintry weather, it looks like, starting Sunday evening. So let's get to the details on that. I'm going to show you the GFS model here, but I can tell you other models have reasonably similar ideas. There are some subtle differences. Uh, 
This is going to be a warmer system than the last couple that have come through this week, of course, with the very cold weather. And with that, we have to introduce the possibility that it's not 100% snow in some parts of our region. I guess I wouldn't be surprised if Sunday nights uh, there was some sleet trying to mix in, particularly from Route 30 on south. Uh, that may have an impact on snow totals. But here's the GFS Sunday evening at 7 o'clock with some snow pushing in. The peach color here, that would be your sleet uh, trying to, uh, to push in from the south and west. Here's uh, middle of the night, Sunday night, with the sleet getting up to roughly Route 30, maybe even 224, uh, and snow elsewhere. By Monday morning at uh, daybreak, uh, here we go. Uh, the sleet line maybe you know, still nearby to the south with some snow. And uh, Monday afternoon, still snowing. This is going to be a pretty long-lived event. Once it starts snowing Sunday evening, precipitation is going to stick around uh, for a good chunk of Monday. This isn't going to be one of those four or five hour things. This is going to last some time. How much snow are we talking about? Well, that uh, is the, the question, and it's going to be a tougher forecast because of the possibility of some mixing going on. But right now, and I still have some things to look at, but right now I'm thinking an average of three to five as a first stab at this. You're going to be closer to the three if you get some sleet mixed in, and the best chance for that will be in our southern part of our viewing area. Uh, I think five is more realistic if there's no sleet mixed in. Uh, this will be a wetter snow than the powdery stuff we've had this week. So if we get four or five inches, this is going to be a harder snow to shovel uh, during the course of, of Monday as compared to the uh, the real you know fluffy kind of stuff you can almost broom off your uh, stoop uh, uh, this week. So some z some details still to be worked out with this. We're going to be tracking the rain snow line and the and the and the snow sleet line as we get closer. But do want to give you a heads up that this looks like enough to shovel and plow. Possibility of some sleet mixing in. Totals will depend on that sleet. I am working uh, tomorrow evening and Sunday evening. I'm in for Mike Joyce this weekend, so I'm going to be, of course, continuing to continually, easy for me to say, updating the forecast. But right now, first stab, general three to five. Uh, that is not written in stone, though. It's not etched on a tablet. So check back often over the weekend as we will, of course, make any needed adjustments. Long-range temperatures. Now, earlier this week, we thought next week would be fairly significantly warmer than this week. And it still looks like it will be warmer, but it was a little bit of fool's gold. It's not going to be quite as mild as we thought it would be. So next week, I think we're going to have a lot of highs in the 20s, which, hey, it's better than the single digits, but just not the 30s that we thought we would have uh, you know, a few days ago. But still, the trend is our friend in the longer range. Uh, once we're done with the harsh cold this weekend... We're not going to see those types of bone-chilling readings anytime soon. Next week's below average, yes, but there is a chance we get above average for a handful of days here, uh, you know, middle of the month and into the, uh, you know, kind of the 18th through the 22nd period. So something to look forward to there. That's the Friday weather for Weather Geeks. Lots to talk about again today. Hope you have a good weekend. I will uh, be in this weekend, and so we'll be doing some videos for you on social media. And uh, I'll be keeping you up to date on what we can expect with our next system for Sunday night and Monday. In the meantime, be sure and check out my forecast tonight on 21 News at 6 and 11.